let's go. <laughs> yes. <sighs> G'day and welcome to Fishing. It's Michael Guest here to have a bit of a chat about chasing bass on uh, on soft, mainly well, mainly on soft plastics or soft baits. Uh, bass are just one of those absolutely fantastic fish to catch, whether you're chasing them in uh, in little shallow creeks, uh, in in river systems, or in a big stocked impoundment like we have behind me here. Uh, they're an amazing fish where they travel uh, hundreds of kilometres, up to hundreds of kilometres uh, in the natural world where they'll be right up uh, feeding on terrestrial insects and, and all sorts of things that fall out of trees or crawl off the riverbank and then make their way right down to the salt to spawn in the cooler months. And uh, places like this impoundment here that are heavily stocked are a fantastic place to start your, your bass fishing off, to, to learn some of the, the little secrets about catching bass and certainly on, on soft plastics. Uh, starting off with the tackle, uh, I've got a beautiful two to four kilo, seven foot two to four kilo rod here, uh, which is just ideal, that two to four kilo weight, nice soft tip so I can feel what my soft plastic's doing, I can feel what my soft bait's doing. If I'm throwing a little soft vibe, I can feel that vibration, but then has that power to load up onto uh, a bigger Australian bass. And don't forget that sort of, that secret mark you wanna try and get to. Everybody would love to catch one, you know, up over 50 centimetres, but um, even bass in that 30 centimetre range pull really, really hard. Got a little two and a half thousand size spin reel on there. Um, that one there, little ALX reel, some eight pound X9 braid, and then uh, some 10 pound fluorocarbon leader, and then a jig head to suit. This is a little quarter ounce 2-0, this one here. But I've got a box of, of jig heads there next to me, um, a whole range. So depending on where I'm going to fish, how deep I'm gonna fish, then I'll change that up. And I've also got some um, surface frogs there as well, which I'd use an totally um, unweighted weedless style hook to throw across the weed beds, but that'd be more so later on during the day. So range of soft plastics, got all my bits and pieces here, even got, even got a bit of scent that we can add as well. And uh, it's all about sort of prospecting and working around. Well, I've got a range of soft plastics, as I mentioned there, to choose from curly tails, and but I reckon, and paddle tails, I think I'm gonna go with one of these. It's a bloodworm colored paddle tail. I'll pop one out of the packet there so and I've, I've chosen a, a jig head that's a sixth of an ounce so I'm going to work along this bank and then cast and once it gets a little bit later on uh, I'll probably go to a surface frog around the weeds because if you've, if you've ever been bass fishing whether it be in an impairment or walking along a creek and then you get that bite off the surface is just amazing and you can do that with winding little soft plastics across the top or or bigger bigger baits like a frog, it's just sensational to catch fish like that. So if you get a chance to do that, that's awesome. But I think that's more when the sun gets down a little bit lower and the bass tend to, tend to get a bit more crazy in and around those weed beds, they, they, they get very aggressive and that's the time to do that. So at the moment, while it's a bit early, uh, we'll target them just off the edge of the weed bed. So there's a weed bed out further here in a bit of a channel. So I'm gonna fish that. So that's my little soft plastic. So I'll just line it up with that sixth of an ounce jig head, nice and central through the nose, like we always do back in through that dorsal fin area and then out through the back of it and then push it up onto the grub keeper. And that's it, that's absolutely perfect. It's lined up, if it's not right the first time, just take it back out and just adjust it a little bit, but you want it to swim as naturally as possible. And just cruising along here, I've got a pair of polarized sunnies on the ground there and having a look through that sheen, I can see uh, some type of little bait fish, not sure what they'd be, little glassy looking bait fish, and they're about that size. So we really want to match the hatch, and that's really important when you're doing any soft plastic fishing, whether it be for a, a flathead, uh, a bass, a brim, what it is, doesn't matter what it is, I should say, you want to try and match the hatch. So we're going to add a bit of scent too. So always have a, have a tube of that in your pocket. Um, I'll load this gear up in a minute and go for a bit of a wander. Just add a little bit of scent down either side. They're already scented these these power bait lures anyway, but just add a little bit of extra spice there in case we get a bass who follows it along and says, oh, I don't know if I'm quite ready to eat. Gets a bit of that gulp scent and then it'll really, really commit. So that's that's um, that's the way to go there. Little loop knot tied and I've got um, I've got uh, a joining knot from my um, rod length of fluorocarbon leader, 10 pound leader back to my back to my braid there as well. And that loop knot will really let that lure swim around and do its thing. So I'm gonna go with that. If that doesn't work, then be prepared to change it up a little bit. So we'll try a curly tail plastic, but I reckon that's the shot to start with. 
it pays just to check your leader out um, every now and then, every few casts, and just make sure that, that everything's right, that, uh, that you haven't got any nicks in your leader. There's nothing worse than finally hooking a good bass and then, and then having it bust off. So as far as uh, techniques go with these curly tail or paddle tail plastics, so nice big cast out, and I'm, I'm working a deeper edge, and then I'm, I've got to lift my rod tip as I get closer. So I'm just going to let that sink and swim down, but I'm in contact with that lure as it's swimming down. So bass can quite often school up higher, and they will hit it on the sink. And I'm going to give it a couple of hops, little twitches, and give it a roll, what I call a roll. So I've just got it rolling along, that paddle tail's vibrating away. I'm just waiting for a bass to say, hey, that looks like... Uh, like a little bait fish, that looks like my dinner. And then have a little pause, let it swim down again, still staying in contact with what it's doing. Give it a twitch, and I've just touched the bottom there now. So that gives me a bit of an idea of what the, what the contour, if I was in the boat, I'd really know what that contour or that bank looks like. But here I can see the slope of the hill and I can see it rolls away. I reckon it'll be a great place along here to catch one on a surface floor later, but I'm gonna persevere with the plastics at the moment. Oh yes, come on. Oh no, he's got me in the weed. That's, a, that's the one thing you gotta watch when, you, when you're walking around the bank. Oh, just crunch that. Oh, look at that, that is a good bass. It's a good bass, come on buddy, come on buddy, come on buddy. Oh yes. Oh, give it to him in the end there. Oh, just gotta watch they've got. Oh, they've got um, pretty sharp spines. I'm a pretty happy angler, I've got to tell you, walking the bank. Look at that. They've got really sharp spines right there. One there and one there. Two quite sharp spines, and they're quite sharp on the dorsal as well. And, uh, and down low on that, that anal spike as well. But look at that. He's just punished that. And I drove the hook in really hard. I had a bit of a tap. I've actually set the hook up fairly high, so I'll say he was down a bit deeper, that fish. But I'll tell you, that is a beautiful looking bass up over that 40 centimetre mark, and I'm... I'm pretty excited to catch that bloke. That was pretty cool. He hit me and then I pulled him into the weed and I guess that's one of the things, if you're in a kayak, you can steer the fish away from the edges, but when you're on the edge, you're, you're always pulling it in. But look, there's no crocodiles here. I don't mind walking around and, and getting in the weed if I had to, but I managed to steer him into not a bad spot. I reckon I'm even a chance of a, of a, uh, of a fish on a surface lure later. So sun's still up and uh, if you can get quality fish like that biting, then you know you're in with half a chance. All right, so hook out of there, and uh, I reckon I'll get a few more casts in before the sun goes down. I'll watch this one swim off. Oh, look out. Oh, that's a nice fish. Oh, that's the way off you go. Oh, look at that. Water's nice and clear. There you go, bud. 